Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla. It is day two of my big trip around England. I am currently in a very noisy Sheffield and the reason why I've got the window shut is because there's building work going on there and massive cranes and noise basically. So I'm sat in the car instead. So it's Sheffield city centre, it's eight in the morning and today we are going to Newmarket then Watford and then Milton Keynes. I'm definitely going to need some charge en route because I'm on 65%. Um, there are some charges at the customer. Let's see if we can actually get on one because last time they were all full. If not, we are going to stop at one of the superchargers en route. Before we set off, just a quick review of uh, the previous trip. So the last two days we did 435 miles. Uh, and 257 watt hours per mile. That is well below my lifetime average, as you can see at the bottom of 288. Um, I'm going to reset that trip now so that we have got a review of the next two days, because as well as the legs that I've just talked to you about tomorrow, I'm then going to Bedford and then back up to Sheffield again. And then there will be a part three of this trip where we do the scenic route home from Sheffield on Saturday. I've added a supercharger stop at Grantham uh, as I go past. Basically, um, I need to pick up some messages off my phone uh, and I'm going to get a drink. So, as I'm going to stop anyway, why not stop at a supercharger? Why not plug in and get some charge while you're going to stop anyway? Um, this, again, is the point about charging as you go. If you coordinate a charge stop with needing to stop for whatever else, then you're not wasting any time charging. And I think this is what people who attack EVs don't get, that the majority of the time when you're charging the car, it's when you don't actually need to be driving it. That is the whole point. You charge up while you're asleep, you charge up while you're eating or using the loo or whatever else. Just plugged in here at Grantham on 43% and watching the thing ramp up. So that, it's not going to get to 150, but I don't know. Yeah, somewhere near it. 126. Okay, that's decent. So I've arrived on 43%, and these are 150 uh, kilowatt Type 2 chargers. And as you can see, it's dead busy. <laughs> there's 16 chargers here, and there's only two of us. So on these chargers, the thing to note is if it's unless it's a 250 kilowatt charger then it's going to be a type 2 and you can tell that it's a type 2 because it's got two hoses basically you've got a CCS for model 3 and model Y and then you've got the old Tesla connector for model S and model X um, these can only do 150 and the point to note is that these are paired so I'm on 8B and then you've also got 8A so these between them can do 150 max so if you get to a site that's a little busier than this one and you want to make sure that you're going to get the fastest charge make sure that you are not plugging in if you can avoid it onto a paired charger so in this case if there was somebody else on 8a but there was nobody on the sevens then i would go on one of those because that is going to charge faster than this however given that i arrived on 43 percent and I'm not going to get full speed anyway. Uh, I mean, 126 is still uh, pretty good. The other thing to note here is there are 16 superchargers here, 16, which is a lot. But then look over here, we have got a grid serve electric highway hub, and there's already six, and there's another six going in. Now, these are absolutely brand new which is good because it means they're going to work. And these, I believe, are 350 kilowatts. Now that is quicker than the Tesla pumps, which are only 150. However, here's the thing. <laughs> most cars are not going to get 350 because most cars, I think, top out at something like 150. So the 126 that I'm getting would be decent for almost anything with a pretty flat battery. Most EVs, can't go any quicker than that anyway but it's good that they are installing 
really super high power chargers. There is a point, of course, that this here would cost me 66 pence a kilowatt hour, and these here cost me 39. So, once again, the Tesla advantage is that there's a lot more, mostly, of our chargers, and they're a heck of a lot cheaper. I think just one final point before I unplug and get on my way. Um, that this is happening is absolutely fantastic. I know I'm running a Tesla channel, but it is about EVs. And ultimately, the more chargers that we get for everybody, the better. And these are, these are good chargers. The ones that were in the hotel on part one of this trip, they were bad chargers. There's no point sticking in 50 kilowatt so-called rapid chargers in 2023 which is what BP Pulse just did with a stupid tariff on them and seemingly with BP Pulse they don't maintain them at least with GridServe um, as the successors of the electric highway they actually do look after them as of course do Tesla with all of these lovely superchargers. Making steady progress down the A1 um, traffic is heavy in places which is why i've stuck it on 65 as usual 65 can be quicker than 70 because you can do a steady speed rather than faster slower faster slower um let's see how well we cope with this flying junction now it says it's recommending a maximum speed of 50 as we go through the twists 65 is probably a bit quick actually so we'll slow it to 60. Again, autopilot doing its thing. Yeah, 65 would have been okay, actually. I've been sat here in the customer for best part of three hours, and I was able to plug in. So I've now got 87%, which is bags and bags and bags and bags. I'll turn the GoPro back on, but you can see the little charger pods that they've got here in the car park. Just makes life nice and easy. I'm on the M1, uh, heading north from Watford, um, having done my last call of the day, heading towards Milton Keynes. And as you can see, traffic is properly horrible, but it's 20 to six in the evening and it's northbound. So what do you expect? So what I am doing is letting the car drive so I'm on autopilot and essentially I'm feeling safer as I'm doing this because as I keep saying the car has got more cameras and sensors than I've got eyeballs so it is going to be able to watch for traffic even if they're behind me like this guy here I can't see him if I look in the mirror I cannot barely see him but the car knows he's there um, and we're just gonna bump along in traffic. So autopilot will bring us to a halt, it will resume us again, it will do all of those things without any intervention from me at all. I just need to make sure I've got a hand on the steering wheel and give it a waggle now and then so that it knows that I'm actually here. Otherwise, the car will take all of the stress and the aggro out of this away. And this isn't even just about, well, you know, what if you were driving manually? previous cars that I've had with a manual gearbox this would be a lot of bumping along in first gear second gear and lots and lots of changes so you've not only got to watch for all of the traffic around you you've got to keep thinking about how much power do I want to put down and in what gear with this I basically just sit here so horrible gnarly traffic and I don't particularly care this is part of the reason for having a car like a Tesla. It just makes even things like this relaxing. So I'm hopeful that the changes going on at the moment with full self-driving and testing in other places is going to make a difference because at the moment the car is shouting at me because it can't feel my hand on the wheel unless I put my hand back on the wheel and give it a waggle. I don't actually need to do anything. I'm going in a straight line and we're just bumping along in traffic and as you can see it's brought me to a halt and I'm not doing anything. But 
there's no particular need for me to be able to sit and have to keep waggling the steering wheel. So if they're now testing proper full self-driving in parts of Europe, um, bring it here please so we can do the same thing because this is annoying. Which is the only thing that's annoying because the rest of it, as I say, we'll get there when we get there. We are rolling along in traffic. It's not great, but the point is, the car is taking all of the aggro away. So the van's pulled over, which means that we're going to accelerate forward a little bit more and then we will slow down. I wouldn't probably go as fast as the car, but actually it's doing a reasonable job of keeping my speed down to something sensible. I am going to need to intervene as we get up here though, because there's more cars trying to merge in and it won't necessarily uh, cope with them. So let's see what it does. I'm going to pull my foot round to cover the brake, just in case I need to give it a quick dab to disengage it to be able to um, let some of these guys in because ideally what you want to do here is to create a gap which allows them to slot in without us as we've just done now come to a complete halt where you are not cooperating with other traffic you're creating the queue that you are then sucking <laughs> so the car is choosing to pull itself forward which isn't necessarily great there's actually a big gap behind me for oh there was a big gap behind me for the truck uh, but somebody has just come across the solid white line and put themselves into it so perhaps getting across a lane actually if that's possible might be a good idea i just dabbed the brake to be able to let the truck in and i've just flashed him to do so again let's manage people in rather than having people force their way in but i don't particularly want to sit behind uh, the big truck all day long. So, is that going to become lane one now? Because I've just seen somebody go zooming up there. That's interesting. They really need to um, show that a little better because there's no particular reason for the truck to move across into what is now lane two. Why didn't he just sit there? I'm not quite sure what this guy is doing, so I'm just going to keep going along. We will re-engage autopilot and we'll see where we get to so speed is 40 let's see if the car reads it and actually pays any attention and it has so I'm going to put my right hand down on the drive stalk to select the new speed limit so we will now accelerate as fast as 40 miles an hour and no further I've arrived now in Milton Keynes at the hotel which is also a football stadium which is going to be interesting to go and have a look at traffic was horrible coming out of London, well, coming out of Watford at least, um, of the M1, but with autopilot on the Tesla, it does make it that much less stressful than it could be, which is great. The car has still got 50% of power in it, which is absolutely fine to get me to Bedford and then onwards, uh, northwards to a supercharger tomorrow, so I'm not even going to think about uh, charging again. It doesn't need it, so we're not going to bother. Um, Let's go and have a look at the hotel. Good morning. Walking back to my room after breakfast and... Um, <laughs> this is cool. This is a hotel. Look, bedrooms, football. Ever seen anything like it? Back in the car now and ready to go. It's been an interesting stay. Um, there's not many hotels that double as football stadia. Anyway, um, we are... 682 miles into this trip having done 256 watt hours per mile so 3.9 3.9 something or other but 238 since i last charged it in newmarket yesterday which is much better but it's only 11 degrees and as you can see it's gray and overcast so the summer temperatures in enhanced uh, efficiency that i was hoping we might get I'm not sure we're going to do. Some of these distribution centers um, are on a scale that's hard to believe. I mean, you've just got blue walls <laughs> of warehouse. I don't know if you can see on the left hand side, this one just goes on and on and on. And there's a whole series of them. challenge here of course is 
every single thing that we buy gets delivered on a truck and at the moment they're all diesel so I did a video talking about how the uh, Tesla truck could be an absolute game changer and it really could be because we have got to break the cycle of everything no matter whether it's a, an environmentally friendly product or it's green or it's whatever it's still delivered using diesel and the less we can do the better especially into urban areas um, and that is where EV I mean EV cargo but it's not EV it's a truck it's diesel we need it to actually be an electric truck an EV that'd be much better on a very busy A1 this morning um, I've been doing more like 55 60 than 65 because traffic's so heavy that we just keep getting slowed down so that's fine we'll just waft along it's not actually doing anything at all to boost my efficiency though because that is still showing as 251 since we were last charged and 257 for the whole trip so it's it has warmed up a bit and you can see this blue sky and it's 16 degrees but it, it's still not it's still not particularly great i wonder what i need to do in this car to be able to get it so i can cruise along the motorway at a relatively slow speed um and pull my efficiency down so it's okay so i'm around four miles per kilowatt hour which i keep saying is is the, the, the target but i thought it would be better so what we're going to do is we are heading back to uh, Sheffield I am going to stop at the uh, Grantham supercharger as I did uh, on the way south um, I as on the way south have need to stop and do a little bit of work so we'll plug in uh, we'll do that and then we'll get back on our way again so it doesn't actually matter that it's only a v2 uh, site with up to 150 kilowatts. I'm going to arrive on it says 18%. Yeah, okay, so I reckon uh, on 18% we'll probably go pretty much up to towards 150 anyway, 146, 140, somewhere like that. Uh, and it'll just maintain that level for a while, which is good because it will allow me to get into emails and other things. Unlike yesterday, this is a seriously busy supercharger. However, I was happily just about able to jump on a non paired stall, the last one. Still at the supercharger here in Grantham, it has quietened down a little bit. And I am here in the uh, Tesla office, sat in the back of my car, which actually is a perfectly decent place to um, get some work done uh, which is helpful when as I am you are on the road all week so again it's a flexible car you've got bags and bags and bags of space and obviously loads of lights look at the reflection in the roof everybody um, it is a perfectly reasonable place to sit and again I am not wasting any time I am doing some work so I'm actually charging the car up a lot more than I actually need basically because um, I need to sit here anyway. So while I'm sat here and it's 39p a kilowatt hour, I might as well. On my way back into Sheffield now and we are quite comfortably doing uh, 250 watt hours per mile, which is four miles per kilowatt hour. That's the magic number that I was looking for. So if it was 39p a kilowatt hour at the supercharger to charge up, that means that this trip is costing me a touch under 10p um, uh, per mile. 10p a mile. That is impressive for a car of this size and quality and way better than you would get on petrol and diesel so there is a point here about electric cars do not have to be the expensive this is going to cost a fortune thing that certain parts of britain's right-wing media like to make them out to be it's just not true and it's so relaxing because it's so quiet in here I have decided to park in the main hotel car park, which is, let's just say it's tight, but I got in here early and it's maneuverable. Basically, the reason for doing so is although they charged me a chunk of money, I arrived with the battery on, what, 71%. So 
just under a third of the battery to charge up. That's worth best about nine quid maybe on a supercharger or something like that. It was going to cost me seven, eight pounds to park where I normally do. So I think this is 15 for the night, but that probably makes some kind of sense. And of course, I am using the charger of Granny, which I know I've said in previous videos is a complete waste of time. Well, it is until you get to somewhere like this where the charging is three pin, but never mind. So as I end this video uh, for the last two days here in this dingy underground car park, what have we learned? Well, the first thing I think is that the other EV brands have got some hope for the future because if we get more big grid serve installations going in as that was, and I know there's a few up and down the place, that's really going to make a difference, really going to make a difference because the issue at the moment is that so many of the so-called rapid chargers are only 50 kilowatts that it's just ludicrous. Um, that is not a suitable speed to be charging a car that's got a big battery pack. Obviously Tesla superchargers go way 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 quicker than that but the grid serve ones were there were, if your car can cope with it, actually quicker than Teslas. That's a challenge for Tesla to be able to go even faster and then to make sure that we are keeping our lead. So other than that, efficiency wise, I've got four miles per kilowatt hour out of it, which again, based on the 39, 40p or so I'm paying at 10p a mile, that's pretty good value. Um, and of course I've got here and I'm nice and cool and unflustered because I'm driving a Tesla and Tesla is nice and chilled. Anyway, tomorrow I've got to go home and I'm going to go home an interesting way. So I'm going to make sure the car is charged up to 100% before I go. So I don't need to even think about charging. And I think if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so because then you'll be around for when I put the next video up right here on Just Get a Tesla.